Hey everyone, Mech here for another beginner's video to aquariums. Uh, again, if you have an aquarium, you may want to skip this video. Uh, if you're new to the hobby and you want to learn about it, uh, definitely keep watching. If you've not watched the other ones, definitely go back, look at the tank selection, uh, and uh, look at the equipment, uh, look at your gravel and substrate. This one gets all the pieces starting to come together so you've got your your equipment you've got your filter your heater your lights you've got gravel in there you've got your decorations you've washed them you've cleaned them properly you're ready for some water so if you've got uh if you went out and bought the python hook that sucker up uh, and fill your tank up. Now, one thing that uh, I should say that I didn't say before is when you first buy your tank, and I should have said this at the start, when you first get your tank, you want to do a leak test. Preferably outside, uh, if you can, unless it's like 20 below, uh, you probably want to do it in your tub if you can if the tank is small enough to fit in the tub um, basically fill it with water and make sure it's not going to leak on you uh, if it's going to leak get it back to the store where you bought it from get a different tank um, if you find that there's no leaks you're good to go at that point then you can uh, get your equipment on Get your uh, gravel in, your washed gravel, your washed decorations, uh, get them all in where you want them, how you want them to look, and uh, start filling that up with some water. Uh, now, as you're filling the tank up, if you notice that the water is cloudy right out of the gate, that means you didn't wash your gravel properly. Stop immediately, drain that, which, uh, whatever you put in get that gravel out wash it really good empty out the tank what's left of the water because uh, there's always going to be some that you can't get out so empty that out wash that gravel really good again get it back in the tank get your decorations back in and start over once it's filling up and the water's clear uh, you're probably going to be good uh, so you're not going to have all those little particles of whatever from the gravel floating around in there uh, so you got your tank you got it filled up uh, follow the manufacturer's instructions on how to prime your filter. If you've got a hang on the back filter, basically just take some water out of your aquarium, start filling up the uh, hang on the back filter. Uh, basically you're priming it, so when you turn on the pump you're going to hear it gurgling and, and doing weird things. You hear a lot of air and then all of a sudden it's just going to go quiet and you're going to start hearing water flow. Uh, Similar with a canister filter, there's going to be some air getting pushed into the tank and then all of a sudden it's going to run pretty quiet and you're not going to notice any air bubbles or you shouldn't notice any air bubbles, especially out of a canister. Um, so, once you got everything running, uh, your filter, um, your lights, Go ahead and turn that heater on. Um, whatever fish you plan on keeping in your aquarium, you know, find out what their temperature range is. Most of them have a little bit of a, a degree of um, flexibility, um, but you don't want to go too cold and you don't want to go too hot. You want to find that sweet spot that's kind of in the middle of all of the fish that you plan to keep in your aquarium unless you're doing a, spe a species specific tank um, you're probably going to most likely have a mixed tank of some different species you know, find the happy medium with all of them put your temperature there get your thermometer on the tank so you know where it's at let that tank sit get that temperature up now there is a hot debate on the internet on when to add fish I have been able to add fish 24 hours after um, I've set the tank up. 
and I've had success with that. However, I didn't go and fully stock the tank. I added one, maybe two fish, and that's it. Um, you know, I've treated the tank, I've got the pH adjusted, um, I've dechlorinated it, uh, I've got the filter running, filter pads inside, the heaters, you know, got the tank at the right temperature. Uh, I'm usually pretty confident in being able to put one or two fish in and uh, letting the system set. Now, you can do a cycle, uh, a ammonia cycle, basically, a nitrogen cycle. Um, to fully cure what's known as curing the tank. Um, you're going to have a bacterial bloom, uh, which is probably going to cloud the tank. This is a normal thing. It's typically called new tank syndrome. Um, and it happens to everybody that sets up a brand new aquarium. Basically the bacteria is blooming and it's it's doing its thing. It's it's trying to go through the. It'll clear up over time. Um, so just let it do its thing. If you go with the fish route and put one or two fish in, make sure these fish are hardy enough to handle the swings of the tank. The tank is going to go through uh, some big pendulum swings. pH is going to be weird. Um, your your um, temperature is not going to be right at times. It, it's just it's going to be weird and it's going to be off. Your parameters are going to swing. You're going to have ammonia spikes. You're going to nitrate spikes. You're going to nitrate spikes. It, it's just going to it's going to go through this weird transition and it's going to suck. So if you put a fish in, make sure it's something that's a little hardy and can handle it. It's possible that you're going to lose the fish. Don't be surprised if you do. Um, again, you're going to go through some crazy stuff. Um, once this tank has settled, and it can take some time, um, this is where, when somebody made a comment and that I was patient, this is where patience comes in. So if you are not a patient person, this hobby is not for you. You need to walk away from these videos right now. Um, end of story you just need to walk away if you are a patient person you're gonna have an amazing tank down the road but you have to wait out some of these cycles you've got to wait until the tank gets to a stable position and you are able to add in more fish uh, and, and even more delicate fish that, that can handle it um, in the video that I referenced uh, with the, the gentleman that said go ahead and throw a matchbox car in your tank he also said uh, that neons are hardy fish neons are not a hardy fish they are very pH sensitive uh, and, and very sensitive to ammonia spikes uh, they are probably typically the first ones that you're going to lose in the tank uh, if your your tank is uh, going through its uh, pendulum swings leave them out <laughs> just leave them out uh, my best suggestion would be like a molly or maybe a platy uh, and I would put one or two of them in that's it um, I wouldn't go above that uh, especially starting out with a new tank uh, you're just going to run into problems you're going to have a big die off and it's just not going to be worth it and you're going to get frustrated and you're going to leave the hobby and you're not going to be happy because you sink all this money in and, and the return is not there. So, uh, one, maybe two fish tops. Let it sit. Uh, my best advice, let it sit for about six months. Six months is a good time frame for everything to stable off. Now, your tank may cycle and stable quicker. Uh, it may take longer. Um, for me, I've always waited six months. I threw one fish in, 
um, let it stabilize. Uh, if the, the fish didn't survive, then I know that it's not done doing that cycle. I'll wait maybe a week, maybe put another single fish in, something that's not too expensive, um, something that is hardy, put him in there. He survives, uh, bonus, he stays in, uh, and then I can, can start considering putting some other fish in. Again, you want to start with your hardier fish. Um, unless you are a experienced uh, aquarist, uh, aquariumist, if you will, um, I would stay away from discus fish. They're very, very pH sensitive. Um, they're expensive. Just, they're beautiful. They're amazing. They get big. They're they're fun but they are for somebody who's got a little bit more experience I would stay away from that as a beginner um, platies, mollies um, down the road maybe some cichlids like some angelfish um, if you're doing a community tank do not put African cichlids in and do not put South American cichlids in uh, you will have World War 3 in your tank guaranteed. Uh, the only inhabitants left will be the Africans or the, the South American cichlids. Uh, do not mix those two together either. Do your research on your fish. Uh, if you want a community aquarium, find those fish that have the right demeanor for a community aquarium. If you're wanting a semi-aggressive aquarium, find those fish that fit that. Uh, if you're wanting to do a very aggressive aquarium, with fish, um, again, do your research on them. Uh, don't throw a piranha and expect it to be happy with the other fish. Uh, it's probably not going to work out for you. Um, same with uh, an Oscar. You throw an Oscar in there. If the if his tank mate is smaller than him, he's probably going to become lunch. End of story. Um, so. Be careful what fish you put in. Um, do your research on the fish that you want. Lots of research. Find out what tank mates that they can go with. Find out um, your pH ranges. Find out uh, uh, kind of their habitats if you're wanting to mimic their habitats. You know, where uh, African cichlids tend to eat the plants. Uh, so they're more in rocky environments. They eat a lot of plant material. So you probably can't do a planted tank with an uh, African cichlid because they're gonna, you ain't going to have any plants left. Um, so definitely do your research. Uh, again, you can have a lot of fun with this hobby. You can learn a lot with this hobby. Uh, but do research, 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 research. Uh, so when you do... Uh, start your tank off and you do get this the the new tank syndrome your tank is gonna look like uh, somebody came into the room and dumped uh, a glass of milk into your tank it's gonna be this milky white haze that's gonna be in your tank this is normal uh, again you're just gonna have to wait it out you can add clarifiers to your tank to help clear the water up but in my experience it's best just to let it do its thing once the water gets clear odds are your tank is going to be nearing the ends of the cycle stage uh, and into this more stability stage uh, and that's my barometer of knowing when my tank is ready to start adding other fish in so the new tank syndrome I've seen it last as short as a week. I've seen it last as long as six weeks. Um, it just depends on how quick your system goes through the, the process. Um, it happens in every tank. It is normal. Don't freak out. Don't fret. Um, it will pass in time. Uh, you just got to give it the time for it to pass. Um, if your tank is a green color, the water is actually green, that means you've got an algae problem. 
uh, most likely you put a tank near a window or some other major light source that is causing that tank to become green. Uh, at that point, you're probably going to have to start doing some water changes and maybe consider moving the tank to a different part of the house. Again, direct sunlight is not a good thing for aquariums. Um, once you get the fish in there, uh, you want to, you're going to have to do maintenance on the tank. There's no way around it. You're going to have to add water. Water is going to evaporate. It's going to leave a weird, unsightly gap at the top of your tank. Um, it could potentially cause your pump to stop working properly and potentially uh, ruin the pump. So maintaining the water level is a big aspect of it. Um, you can put, uh, they've got auto top offs. Um, you can totally add one to a freshwater tank. Um, just make sure your water is treated um, for adding that, uh, adding that is part of the process of your top off. Now that's just going to keep the water stable and whatnot. Um, but depending on the size of tank, you're going to have to do water changes. Now the reason why you want to do a water change is quite simply, you've got to get the old, think of it this way. If you never took out your garbage to the curb and let a garbage man come and take it away, your house would be filled with trash very quickly. So think of you as the garbage man taking the garbage away from somebody's house. The house being your tank. So you gotta get some of that dirty water out and you need to replace it with some fresh clean water. Typically you wanna do 10 to 20 percent uh, of a water change. Uh, depending on the size of your tank you may have to do this every uh, every two weeks. Sometimes you can go as long as every month, but I wouldn't go past that if at all possible. Um, two weeks to every month is probably the norm. Um, again, probably 10 to 20 percent is the normal amount that you want to take out. Because you don't want to take out too much, because then you can really upset the balance of your tank and you may run into some problems down the road. So 10 to 20 percent is the norm. Now in an extreme case uh, you might be able to go as high as 30 maybe 40 percent. I wouldn't go above 40 percent uh, in an emergency change. Uh, if something's going wrong with your tank and you need to do an emergency change of a lot of water um, I would spread that over the course of several days, do your 10 to 20 percent over the course of three to four days uh, versus doing one big 40 percent change. You're going to upset the balance very quickly in the tank. Your temperatures are going to go off, uh, your, your, your pH could go off, um, you can have a whole host of problems uh, which is going to put stress on your fish which could potentially kill them. Uh, so. 10 to 20 percent. Um, I I don't recommend going above that. If you unless you absolutely have no choice, don't go above 40 uh, in one shot. Uh, beyond that, um, if you can do it over the course of you know do a water change, wait two or three days. Do another small water change, wait two or three day, through two or three days. Do another small water change it's going to be better for the tank. It's going to be better for the fish. Um, you'll, it'll be better long term. Um, so ongoing maintenance, um, probably after about six months uh, and your tank has been fully cycled, your hang on the back pump may stop working. It may not.
it happened to me where mine stopped working and I couldn't figure out why. It was just, just freaking me out. I thought, oh my god, my 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 brand new pump that's only six months old is is toast and I gotta go spend money on a new one. No. What happened was uh, the impeller unit, which is like this little magnet magnetized piece with like a little uh, propeller on one side, uh, got gooed up like a with like some slime in it. The the magnet magnetized motor wasn't allowing that to spin properly. Once I cleaned it off and put it back together, it ran like a charm. Uh, when you're cleaning your equipment. Do not use soap. Do not use any cleaners of any kind. I don't care what it says. All natural, don't. Don't put it in your tank. Uh, if it, Again, if it's not aquarium safe, don't use it. Keep it away. Um, just simple water. Get your, your toothbrush that you're using just for your aquarium. Scrub it down really good. Um, maybe a clean cloth. Um, Don't use soaps, don't use bleaches, don't use anything that can leach back out later and kill off or harm your fish. Because uh, in the long term, you're just going to have to go buy more fish and ah, yeah, that's not fun. So, another piece of advice that I have at this point is sit and enjoy your tank. Nothing drives me more insane than... Uh, a person who has a tank that doesn't sit and enjoy it. They just ignore it. It's just a piece of furniture to them. It sits off in a corner. It might be uh, four inches down because they haven't put any water in it. The, the water's dirty. If you don't want the tank, get rid of it. Um, take the animals to a local pet store donate them, give them away, uh, find somebody who's interested in it, um, get, get rid of the tank. Uh, you're just wasting your time, you're wasting your energy, you're potentially killing the fish. Um, just, just if, you, if you're not going to enjoy the tank, get rid of it. Um, sit in front of your tank, watch the fish, watch them interact. Um, you know, it's, it's very relaxing, it, it can relieve a lot of stress. Um, uh, it, it is. It, it can be very enjoyable, but if you're not going to take care of it, don't keep it. Um, plain and simple. Um, again, this hobby is not for everybody. Um, if you're not a patient person, uh, this hobby is definitely not going to be for you. Um, if you want to try again, I recommend going freshwater. It's a lot less expensive. Um, you're not tying yourself into a whole lot of money. Um, you can probably get into uh, a 20 gallon tank, uh, total cost of probably less than $200. Um, and that's with sand in there, There's some decorations. Um, so you can get into it fairly inexpensive considering some people drop thousands of dollars in their tanks. Um, if, if you get into the hobby and you really like it and you want to go to the next level uh, or you want to try something new, do your research. Always do research. Um, you know, I went to a pet store once, I think I may have mentioned this in another video, where they tried to sell me uh, on two different occasions two animals uh, for my saltwater tank. Uh, and I did, I held off on that purchase and I'm glad I did because those two animals were not, would not have done well in this tank. Uh, either they would have killed off some of my current habitants or they themselves would not live past uh, a couple weeks or so. Um, just because their requirements were very, very, very stringent. So, uh, do research. You know, if, if you're at a pet store or a fish store and somebody says, oh, you need to put this in your tank, oh, this is a gorgeous fish, um, know what you have in your tank. That person doesn't know what you have in your tank. 
uh, research the fish. If you've got your smartphone, research it right there. Um, if you want to hold off, that's my best suggestion. Hold off. Do some research at home. Um, and, uh, and, and find out what what kind of requirements that particular fish or other animal you're going to put in there. Um, snails or... Um, I've seen little blue crawfish uh, for fresh water. And I've actually kept one. Uh, named him Kraken. Um, he was... Uh, quite whimsical um, and oddly enough he did very well in this aquarium um, so there's 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 a lot of things you can do with your aquarium there's there's a wide array of fish um, a wide array of decorations there, the, the the world is is open to limitless possibilities with aquariums so my best suggestion if you're going to jump into this do s take the time do some research enjoy your tank nothing irritates me more than somebody that just completely ignores the tank or does just enough to keep it going but doesn't sit and appreciate the beauty that their tank is and if you don't like the way your decorations are going you can always pull them out put different decorations in you're not tied to anything. Um, uh, it's it's exactly what you put in is what you're going to get out. End of story. Uh, if you don't put much in, you're not going to get much out of it. Uh, if you take a lot of time and do a lot of stuff to your tank, you're going to get much enjoyment out of it. Um, it. It can be an expensive hobby. It, it's really up to you how much you're willing to uh, invest into the hobby. Um, you can go pretty minimal, uh, or you can go all in. Um, there's, there's really, this, this tank isn't just for well-off people. Um, uh, this, this tank setup cost me, uh, initially when I had it as a freshwater tank, um, probably somewhere in the three four hundred dollar range by the time I bought all the decorations and pumps and everything so that's not too bad I mean shoot an Xbox for any about four hundred bucks so um, you know this this is a, a, a lifetime thing this is something that I'm always gonna have uh, I know I'm gonna have it yeah I'm going through some some rough stuff right now with this bryopsis algae uh, but in time it'll pass either uh, I will shut the tank down tear it down start over or I will get it removed and, and keep going with it um, but either way I will still have a fish tank in my house um, I've been hooked on it for a long time um, there, there's nothing quite more magical the first time you have two fish breed in your tank and you have all these little specks in your tank and you're like, what is that? And you realize they're baby fish. There is there is something really cool about that that I you, until it happens to you and you see it for the first time, uh, it will really just make you appreciate your tank even more knowing that you did something right and got uh, a male and a female to breed and actually successfully have babies in your tank. Um, there, there is nothing more satisfying than that, especially in fresh water. Um, salt water, watching my corals grow is, is pretty good satisfaction. You know, uh, some of these corals were very, very tiny when I got them and they've, they've grown quite a bit since I've had them. Uh, so I am quite pleased with that. That to me is is, is a success. Uh, I'm doing something right. Uh, so go out there, do some research, build the tank of your dreams, even if it's only a 20 gallon tank. Um, even some of the smallest tanks can look fantastic. Uh, have a great day. This is probably going to be the end of this series. I do appreciate you watching. 
Um, if you have questions, feel free to ask. Um, I will answer them uh, to the best of my ability. If I don't have the answer, I will find an answer for you. Uh, end of story. So, have a great day, guys. Hopefully you find a good tank, uh, or you've decided, you know, this isn't a hobby for me. Uh, you know, I do appreciate you watching. Either way, have a great afternoon. And I will end this video on something that I'm currently just now seeing in my tank that uh, is something that, that I wasn't sure I had for a while and uh, seeing them is pretty cool. I don't know if I can get up in there to, to show them but right there he is. Oh, third out. Right there is a mini bristle starfish. Very cool. This tank always amazes me. Have a great day, guys. Later.